welcome to a brand new episode of Off the Print. Tonight with me, senior journalist Callum Bandara and TNA parliamentarian Mr. Shanakian Rasamanikam, who will be speaking to us about the current state of politics where the TNA is concerned and, of course, the current state of affairs in the country. Uh, Mr. Shanakian, thank you so much for joining us. Callum, as usual, thank, thank you. you so it's been a little over two years now um, and the TNA is still to meet the president of the country. Oh, why are you all not getting a time to meet Gotabe Rajapaksa? Is it because he's rejecting you all or is it because there's lack of will from your end? Uh, good evening uh, Jamila, good evening Callum and also uh, hello to all the <laughs> Daily Mirror uh, followers on this brand new program. Um, thank you for having me on the program, first of all. Um, <coughs> in fact, uh, you just asked me a question that uh, you should probably ask uh, His Excellency the President uh, yes. Gotabe Rajapaksha on as to why he doesn't want to uh, meet the TNA. Uh, since uh, the President got elected and um, since Parliament, uh, the August Assembly uh, got elected, uh, we are still, we are yet to uh, get a time from the President. Uh, to meet us, okay. uh, for us to share our grievances with him. Uh, however, uh, President uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha at one point uh, last, sometime last year uh, gave us a date and a time, uh, an appointment was fixed, but uh, in the last minute uh, that meeting was called off and uh, we are still uh, to figure out or understand why uh, that meeting was called off. But however, uh, you know, TNA is an alliance Ilangai uh, Tamar Sakachi, the party that I uh, represent, is the is one of the oldest parties in Sri Lanka. It was formed in 1949, yeah. and uh, since then, uh, leaders, the leader of our party at the time, uh, late Mr. Sevich Chevanayagam, and then uh, successive leaders have always had uh, dialogues with elected uh, governments in the country. Uh, we've had dialogue with. Uh, from DSNNAYAKA to Bandaranayakas to Dudley Sirenayaka to Premadasas to Jayavadhanas to Chandrika Kumarthungas to Mahindra Rajapaksa. We've, TNA has always uh, had a dialogue uh, with regards to resolving our uh, concerns in the country which have not been resolved for the last 73 years. Okay. And uh, we are boasting of independence in the country, but independence for everybody is still uh, not uh, achieved. So. President uh, Rajapaksha has not given us a time to meet uh, yet. Even and I off don't the record, even off the record, if you all would, obviously you all would have bumped into him somewhere within yes. these past two and a half years. Uh, haven't you all bothered to even ask why? Well, uh, see, Honorable uh, Sumandiran, uh, when I've been besides him at various uh, functions uh, after uh, the 2000, 2021 budget was proposed, uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksha came up to Honorable Sumandiran and said that we have to meet soon. Okay. And on various occasions, uh, various uh, people have said uh, to Honorable Sumandiran uh, that uh, we have to meet. But it only seems to be only when uh, they meet or bump into Mr. Sumandiran that they remember that a meeting is long overdue. And I think uh, even most recently, Honorable GL Piris and Honorable Ali Sabri had. Uh, said uh, to the media in Jaffna, okay. where else they were in Jaffna, that they were going to meet. So, I think uh, the pres President Rajapaksha is putting this meeting off because uh, he genuinely doesn't seem to be interested in uh, taking this country forward yeah. and is probably stuck uh, in a mindset where he feels that uh, he can fool the Does world. Does this give you all a sense that the President is not interested? No, I think uh, he feels that... In finding that out the concerns of the Tamil people, especially in the North and East. I think the President is not interested in resolving uh, the issues uh, that haven't been resolved for 73 odd years. So, uh, if he was interested, he could he would start a dialogue. I'm hoping that he'd be interested yes. because we want to resolve this matter. Yeah. At no point are we not interested to meet him. Mm -hmm. Even this afternoon when I spoke in Parliament, uh, even last week when I spoke in Parliament, in fact, um, I mentioned uh, that uh, the TNA is happy to talk to the president to help to develop this country. Even. We can help yeah. uh, develop this country, but uh, unfortunately, president uh, doesn't seem to be too interested. I think uh, various various things are being done to show the international community and the world that the president wants to speak, 
but in reality i don't think uh, now, that's a fact uh, now actually when you talk about your party's position yours is a party that believes in devolution of power but the president has repeatedly said instead of devolution he believes in development cutting up the country how do you look at that stand of the president in your well, view well to develop this country uh, all people in this country must feel uh, that their political uh, aspirations have space or their identities have been uh, there is there is room for them to be identify themselves as who for who they are so for an instance uh, i am a sri lankan but uh, i am not willing to let go of the fact that i am a tamil uh, just to be a sri lankan i am sure jamila uh, you would also would i mean just like in india yeah. in india nobody calls themselves uh you know i'm from chennai or i'm from tamil nadu i'm from uh, kerala i'm from uh, they say i'm indian which is the reason for that is that within their areas they are able to uh have their identity so if anybody feels that uh, if president rajapaksha feels that uh, just developing the country yes. uh, is the, is the is the need of uh, uh you know is is the only thing that is needed to be done then he's uh, he's wrong because okay, for 73 party. odd years people have tried to uh, do this people have tried to put these burning issues under the carpet and just to you know take the country forward and they have failed to do that so if anybody thinks that they can do that further if the legitimate political aspirations of the tamils in this country or the tamil speaking people in this country are not uh, fulfilled or not gi- not uh, given then i think there is no way this country would develop uh we're just going to go in for a very short break uh, we will be right back Welcome back to Off the Print tonight with me senior journalist Kalum Bandara and TNA parliamentarian for the Batikla district Mr Shanaki and Rasamanikam. Um uh, Mr Rasamanikam just before we went in for a short break you were speaking about development. Um I want to ask you something very specifically. Uh the Tamil National Alliance has been claiming to be the representatives of the Tamil people especially in the north and east. Uh what have you all done for the Tamil people because uh personally when i have visited the north uh, in fact a few months ago uh people did not have too much of a uh, bubbly say where the tna was concerned they are not too happy with your performance so what have you all done for your people well uh, <coughs> it's a very uh, good question uh so like i told you earlier ilangai tamil sekachi has been uh a political party that has contested elections in the north and the east for the last 70 odd years and if you uh, we don't claim to be claim to be the representatives of the no- people in the north and the east we are the representatives in the north and the east uh, if you look at all the elections in the history we are the only party that has had an mp uh, representing each district in the north and the east no other party has represented the the north and the east like that so I don't know who you met in the north when you went there uh different people have different opinions uh, naturally we are a, a democratic country so people have uh, their own opinions they are entitled to their own opinions but what the TNA has done uh I can if let me put it this way no, if the it, TNA has yeah. not done anything yeah do you think our people will elect us we have never no. gone in front of our people we haven't promised them uh, jobs we haven't promised them to build their roads we haven't promised them houses we have promised them that their legitimate political rights will be won and no, we have been promising that enough? for the seven is this enough well, is there the legitimate rights itself enough because the today development are, also counts mr shanakia okay so you see do, the south so, you to, see colombo so, is so developing why is why Columbo why we not seen that in developing only in terms of buildings jamila you i'll take you in colombo you said you went in jaffna i'll take you in colombo i'll take you to people who would actually tell you who would actually say that this government should go home right now whilst you see uh, port city coming up there in terms of building so no, let, me, let, me let me finish let me finish well, let me finish my let me finish my let me finish my point on this so if the tna has not done anything for the tamil people if the tamil people feel that tamil people are able to reject us uh, in the upcoming elections no, actually, so since we have since we have we have to always told them that we will we will help them achieve their legitimate political rights but if we don't achieve that this country cannot be truly developed not just the north and east the entire country cannot be developed i'll tell you a reason for that if you look at the human rights uh, issue that's still hanging over this country 13 years after the war ended 
If you're not going to ever be able to run away from it, you're never, not going to ever be able to put it under the carpet. One day, this country will have to address that to develop this country. Because any human right, any country that respects human rights will not help Sri Lanka develop. Because only countries like China, which have no democratic values, will help a country like Sri Lanka. So, to develop this country, the legitimate aspirations, political aspirations of the Tamil people in the north and the east and the Tamil speaking people in this country would need to be achieved. And if that can be done, we can develop the entire country. And like you said, if Tamil people are not happy with us, uh, they are at the next election, they will send us packing home. Now That's let's up to them. We are not going to, we are not dictators like uh, some other uh, people may project themselves. We are not dictators. Now, we Mr. are Sanakin. a democratic party. They can uh, they can decide. Now actually when of we talk course. about the development of livelihood activities of Tamil people, these Tamil fishermen, they have been badly hit by poaching by Indian fishermen in the sea of mm. other northern Sri Lanka. Actually what is the kind of solution you advocate to address these livelihood sure. issues I'll of Tamil fishermen? I'll just add something to what Callum is saying. Again, w once again, I'm going back to my uh, point which I made earlier. You very correctly said the human rights issues and everything have to be addressed. I'm all for it. But livelihoods, Mr. Shanakian, matter. Every single day, livelihoods matter. You are fighting for rights. You are fighting for that. That's well, well and good. What about the livelihoods? Definitely. Livelihoods, development. What about I, that, I Mr. Will, now, okay, now, I will be I happy have, if I you... Have two, I have a bit of a tricky situation. I have 30 minutes overall for the program. <laughs> and I have very two very uh, able uh, journalists asking me questions. So I need to be given enough you, time to finish. They you, both have asked me yes. very... Actually, uh, I would like you to ask uh, with a special focus on this uh, Tamil fisherman issue. Livelihood issue, issue and the Tamil fisherman issue. I can issue. do that, but that these two are very uh, long answers. So I'll have to give okay. you long answers. But so you have, to, yeah. you have to give me that space to answer. Okay. Otherwise... Please Please go There's ahead. no point in uh, bringing please, me here. Please so go ahead. The first issue about the long-standing issue about the northern fishermen. Yes. Why is that issue still an issue? Now, we did a protest from Mulatiwu to Jaffna on boats. Yes. And demanding that the law be enforced, that the Navy comes and Navy stops the illegal trawlers from coming into Sri Lankan waters. We have told the minister in charge to enact the law in the country if somebody comes into our boundary to take action. Two, just for two weeks after the protest, the Navy did their job. Again, now the Navy has, we, I have to finish my answer. The Navy has, again, stopped doing that. Now, most recently, two people were killed. Two people were killed and there's a protest that's been going on for six or seven days. Their boats, we still don't know how they died. So, their, you know, livelihood, the government is failing to address the livelihood issue of the northern fishermen, not us. We are not the ones in power. Now, if you look at livelihood, north and east, entire livelihood is either fisheries, agriculture, or uh, livestock. But now, now the agriculture, the now the agriculture minister. industry was severely hit by the ridiculous decision that uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksha and his government took on banning the fertilizer. People in the north end is mainly fisheries, agriculture, and li uh, li uh, livestock. Now, livestock, where cattle farmers were there, President Rajapaksha and his uh, team of Vyatmaga fellows have gone ahead and. Uh, plotted out lands in the middle of uh, 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 area, land area that was used as a uh, pasture land for the cattle and given it out to people to cultivate maize. Now there is no water for the cattle. So our livelihood mainly depends on fisheries, agriculture and uh, uh, livestock. So no. President Rajapaksha since he came to power has destroyed all that. So no. you're asking me an opposition MP, yeah. we are asking no, me an opposition Shanikin, party. You're yeah, are representatives let me of, of the course, Tamil which people. Which is why I'm addressing Have him. Have you so, all not raised this with the ministers in charge? Of course. I think, Jamila, I think you need to watch some of my parliament videos. I have always raised these issues with all the relevant now ministers. We have held protests for that. Now, that is the answer to your question. No, now, an let another me finish, supplementary let question finish, actually. On let that. me finish her question also. Yeah. Now, now about the human rights uh, yeah. issue you said. So now the livelihood prop, livelihood matters. Now look at look at the north and the east. Now there is a minister in the north, Douglas okay. Devananda. There is a district development chairman, Angajan Ramanathan. Now there is another fellow, uh, I don't even know his name in Vaunia. He got 3,000 odd votes on Douglas Devananda's party. He, that fellow is there. Okay. There is Vyalendran is there in Batiklo. Pulleyan okay. is there in Batiklo. Now two years later, since they got elected, what are they up to? They are mining sand. That is what they are doing. They are destroying the environment. These people, were, these people promised to get jobs for the people. Now, if our, if our legitimate political rights are given, whatever administration body that we will have in the North and the East, we will be able to address these issues much better than uh, anybody could do that. So, which is why we don't need somebody, say, let's say somebody from Manradapura, 
who has absolutely no idea about what the issues in the north and the east are to come and tell us uh, what needs to be done. On so, this which issue. is why we are saying that uh, or if, if, if these powers are devolved, okay. you know, we are not asking for a separate country. We are not asking for this country be, to be separated. We are not, we are, in fact, our leader, Honorable Sambandhan, had said that we are for a uh, indivis undivided, indivisible, uh, un uh, something, three things he always says. Yes. You know, a country that can't be divided ever. Okay. You know? So when we ask for that and we are asking for our political rights <laughs> to be uh, given, we will uh, look after our livelihood now, and, and, when it comes to this the government of this day has okay. failed to address the livelihood. They have destroyed our livelihood. livelihood. Now, actually, okay. when, when you talk about this fisheries issue, you mm. put the blame on the Navy for failing to contain Not poaching. the Navy, the Minister in Charge. The Minister, the minister in, charge. in Charge, yes. Now, actually, this is an issue involved in India as Correct. well. Diplomatically, India is involved on this issue. What is your message to India on so this we matter? Have, I think Haven't our, our raised Honorable this Sumandir, of course, your Honorable Sumandiran went and... Uh, met the Indian High Commissioner with the fishermen okay. and we gave them a sort of, we said start a dialogue with the Sri Lankan government. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a demarcation, put the Navy, put the Coast Guard, mm -hmm. Indian Coast Guard, Sri Lankan Coast Guard, put them there and then this issue won't Actually, be Actually, the fault. not taking you all seriously, isn't it? Because neither is India uh, looking into this issue and neither is the Sri Lankan government. Well, see, India needing to look into this issue. It's another thing. India is another country. But you know, we, the India issue, is Mr. Country. Shanakian, so we is have with the Indian issue in fisherman. So, it is Jamila, with the so Indian you want fisherman. Me to, you want me to make so me, what I'm give saying me, make me the president of this country. Then I, I will speak to. to I will love to. I am asking about actually your position on this. I am an opposition MP. Our party is in the opposition. We have informed the Indian High Commissioner. We have informed the uh, cabinet minister. Okay. We have written to the president. We have okay. written to the prime minister. Okay. We have done. We have protested on the ground. We have had demonstrations on the ground. This protest is not against India. You okay. have to clearly understand this. Even in India, there is nearly one billion people. In Tamil Nadu, there are over hundred million people. Mm -hmm. But the number of people who are coming into our waters to do this illegal fishing is about fifty to hundred people. Now, actually, can so why can't they be? Why can't the law be enforced? Because this is this is purely because. Who knows? I mean, I, I heard allegations in Parliament, allegations in Parliament that the relevant ministers' uh, lies also may be involved in this trade Actually, of you, uh, bottom trawling. You talked about the political political will, that the political will is needed to address this issue. Hmm. I mean, where is the political will lacking? Like either in Sri Lanka or India or in both? Well, I would say I can, I can speak on behalf of what is happening in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. right? I think the minister in charge, yeah. right, the minister in charge, doesn't seem to be interested in resolving this issue at all, mm -hmm. right? So, what needs to be done? Yes. What needs to be done is that the you Indian keep saying minister in charge. Please name Honorable him. Honorable Douglas Devananda. He's yes. the minister in charge of fisheries. I, I are you finding for the for the lack of time? Uh, yes. I had to yes. mention that. Actually, are you finding faults with him because he is your political opponent in no, the north? No, he's not my political opponent at all. But I in the mean, north, I, your party is political opponent. East. I am from Batiklo. But I'm your party is political opponent. Not really. I mean, I mean, see, we don't need to attack somebody. Uh, based, there are so many other things that we can say about him yeah. if uh, that yes. was just to be a political opponent. Based on this issue, yeah. this is an issue that we are speaking up on behalf of our people. Yes. This is an issue that yeah. is put forward by our people. Mm -hmm. now, now, let me finish that. Uh, Mr. Shanikian, I will give you your time yeah. to finish yeah. it. We are just going to go in for yeah. a very yeah. short break. We sure. will be right back. We will be right back. Welcome back to Off the Print. Callum, I think you can direct yes, your question. Yes, actually we were talking about the need of political will to address this fisheries issue in all in both Sri Lanka and India. Don't you think that this will should be there from both sides? Both Sri Lanka and India should be coordinating with each other. Sure. Definitely, I, like I tried to tell you earlier, the political will from, I can only speak on behalf of the Sri Lankan side because I am an elected rep MP from the Sri Lankan, uh, in Sri Lanka, not in India. So we have informed the Indian High Commissioner. What needs to be done is that, that we have to come to an agreement that if anybody comes into our waters, that the law will be enacted and these are the laws and these will be very strict laws and the Indian government would need to uh, make awareness amongst their fishermen. Simple as that. But the problem is instead of doing that, now today our uh, Foreign Minister GL Pieris is in India. I, I haven't said, why couldn't he have uh, resolved this matter when he's there? He's probably talking about uh, uh, getting another loan. Yes. You know, that's what they want. Mr. Shanakian, um, moving a little bit away now uh, into geopolitical uh, issues, um, TNA spokesperson Mr. Sumandiran had recently uh, made a comment saying that uh, China was not welcomed uh, in the north uh, where development is concerned. Um, why is this, first of all, the stand of the TNA or is it his personal stand? And if not, why? Why? 
I think he mentioned North and East, that they're not welcome yes. both in the North yes. and the East, not yes. just North. Yes. And he's the Tamil National Alliance's official spokesperson. Okay. So when he speaks, uh, that's his... That's, uh, what the, is the TNA's official... problem with China then? The TNA's problem is not with China. I'll tell you what exactly he said. What he said was that chi the Tamil people in the North and the East aspire to be a human, a, 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 a people who respect human rights, who value democracy, who like human rights, you know. Okay. Our, our values are based on those, whereas China's values are not based on those. That is one thing that he said. And the second thing that he said was that Sri Lanka is not in the Chinese Sea, you know, the South China Sea. We are in the South Indian Sea. So any legitimate uh, concerns of uh, security that India have are justified. So therefore, we don't want to be in between because North and the East is just between India. We don't want to get in between, uh, let's say, some Third World War happens. Uh, we know this So uh, you all don't want to anger India, is it? No, no, not Third World War to anger India. Let's say Third World War uh, starts off. Sri Lanka will be right in the middle of it, this bloody port city. Uh, excuse me for my language, this port city. Uh, will destroy Colombo if something like that happens because this is, this is going to end up becoming, uh, you know, a China dominant uh, place. Even Hambantara is already a China dominant place. We have seen photos and videos of people in Chinese uh, uniform, uh, you know, walking around. So, which is why uh, that's a legitimate concern no. for the Tamil representatives in the North. I think that's not a bit that of a false allegation, Mr. Shanakian. No, I'm not allegation. I'm saying it's an assumption. If there was a, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying it's happening. I am saying if something like that happens, we've given a 99-year lease in uh, the west of Colombo, we've given a 99-year lease in the south but of... But if it's uh, bringing in development, what is wrong in that? What development has, has it brought in now? You tell me how... What Why, development, what development won't asked. the port city bring in, Mr. Shanakian? It, tell me what development the Hambantara port has brought in now. Isn't, tell me. isn't it bringing in a tell lot of business? Not at all, not at all. You tell me something... <laughs> now, if I ask a simple follow... No jobs have been created. See, the Chinese policy is, I mean, there is a book written about this all. Their policy is to create a safe haven for their investors outside of China for them to invest. No. So any investments that the Chinese do would mostly be to bring up their investors, to bring up their economy. They don't worry about the economy in the country that they're investing in. So if anybody feels that, uh, you know, Chinese investments in this country have uh, brought, created jobs or anything like that, it has only brought in a debt trap. We have been trapped in debt. That is why we are today struggling to pay off our debt. So look at the look at the amount of foreign debt that we have. Most of it is to China. So why can't why what's going to happen in the future? We are going to lose more and more uh, parts of our country when we are not unable to pay that. Now, so, okay, yeah. So, if, so if which I is ask, why uh, I didn't. I'm not making an allegation. I'm just assuming that if there was to be a third world war, mm -hmm. who knows what geopowers will happen there? But China is being in one end and the other end of Sri Lanka already is going to be a security threat for the Sri Lankans one day in the future. That's now guaranteed. actually, if I ask a follow-up question, now North East, both the provinces which are part of Sri Lanka, yeah. now it is natural for any foreign envoy to visit any part of the yeah. country and if they want, they can invest in any part of the country in concurrence with the, govern the government of Sri Lanka. So in that context, Chinese ambassadors visit to the North, isn't it, I mean, appropriate? In that so context, I am asking. Chinese ambassador can go wherever he wants. What's the issue with that? Yes. We didn't ask the Chinese ambassador. But actually, not to come. isn't it? I mean, is it diplomatic enough for you to say that China is not welcome in the northeast? It is because the, it is the actually, sentiment is of our people. China has never taken interest is in the northeast. Is it the North sentiment the of the Tamil people, of Mr. Shankar? Of course, of course, because China has not taken any interest in uh, the Tamil people all these years. All of a sudden, uh, why is this interest? You think from? India has? Of course. Of course, India has taken uh, interest in Sri Lanka. I mean, how do you think the uh, Indo Lanka Accord happened? Why did the Indo Lanka ha Accord happen to protect the Tamil people when the 83 riots broke out? And if China yeah. approaches you all saying that they are interested in bringing in development to the north and east, what would your answer be? Yes or no? <coughs> this is not a yes or no uh, answer, Jamila. Well, so you I will seem to have ones. already made up your mind no. saying China is not welcome in the North East. No, see, the thing is, you know, development-wise, investment-wise, we have to look at what the investments are. We are not going to allow, our Tamil people are not going to allow uh, land grab to happen like in Hambantot and Colombo, which, mm -hmm. uh, which is the point that I'm trying to make. Okay. If there is an investment where 100,000 jobs can be created in the North or the East, somewhere the genuine interest for the people of the North and the East, yeah, we, we, we will not oppose it. But if the genuine interest is for China to come and set up a you know, base there, and that is just like in Port City and uh, Hambantota, just because the politicians in the South have allowed 
uh, for their people's lands to be given to China for China to develop. Okay. As legitimate, genuine leaders of the Tamil people in the north and the east, okay. we are not going to, our people, including our people, will not want China to come and take over parts and uh, plots of land in Ac the north and the east. Actually, okay. China has already invested in north, especially they have invested in a sea cucumber plant. I think that's a private investment. Yes, now do you welcome that investment? Actually, well, there is Chinese investment at the end of the day. Well, it's a private investment with a local partner. I'm not very familiar with the background of that, so I'm not able okay. to answer that. But I think, I think that was a private investment also. Mr. Shanakian, uh, Callum, yes. we would love to have this conversation further. And I thank you once again for finishing Parliament and coming to us. Uh, we would love to have you on a program once again uh, in the near future. But for now, we wish you all the best and we wish the Tamil National Alliance all the best as well. And we hope and pray that the TNA gets a meeting with the President very soon so that your concerns, the issues of the Tamil people can be sorted out and can be addressed by this government. Thank you, Jamil, and thank you, Kalum. Uh, to all the audience, I might have sounded a bit hostile and aggressive. That is because these, both of these journalists have been uh, firing me questions <laughs> in a very job, short period Mr. of Shanikian. time. Yeah. So Therefore, I had to. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, I can't smile and be calm and composed. I have to make sure that I uh, say what I actually have but to say. But you are a very outspoken yes. MP, yes. and we need MPs like you yes. for Thank the future you. political stability of this country, Mr. Shanaki. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to join you in a program where we have more time to of course, uh, discuss. Yes. Of course. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me on this program tonight. I will see you again next week with a brand new episode of Off the Print. Till then, goodbye and good night.